What's going on, everybody? Dan Unfiltered. And damn, this was a slobber knocker of a street fight. <sighs> Mia Yim versus Candice LeRae. This, this was crazy. This was. Because normally when women go into street fights, again, no offense, to the, no offense to them. But you can tell their little planet's safe. Some of the spots aren't that dangerous or that big. You know, because their athleticism usually isn't, and technique isn't really safe. For some of the big spots you see the males do. Not in this match. Mia Yim and Candice beat the shit out of each other. Like, there's no other way around it. They beat the hell out of each other. There were legitimate spots that had to hurt. Like, wrestling, fake. Yeah, the mat padded, cool. Table, break, breakaway tables, of course. But there were some spots here that there's just no way around it. That hurt. It just hurt. There's a table spot... They go outside the ring, a drop kick. Candice LeRae goes flying a little too far, crashes through a table with, with like, snacks on it, bagged pretzels go everywhere. It was great. <laughs> it looked visually fantastic, and it was a unique table spot. It wasn't like, uh, just let's just do a power bomb, which we see all the time, or a suplex. No. A drop kick, and you go flying into it? I haven't really seen that often. I've seen it before, but not often. It looked fantastic. Especially with, with, they still had like the snacks on the table. It just looked great. And then the other major spot. I mean, there's other, the match was great overall, but the, there's two spots. That one and the, the finale. Because most of the match, there was a pile of chairs in the middle of the ring. And you know, we've seen this before. Pile of chairs, someone gets suplexed or power bombed or choke slammed on them. Cool. But this one... This was one of the best I've ever seen, if not the best, pile of chair spots. And it was the finale. They, they pulled a Kurt Angle, Shane McMahon, where they had the table, like, propped up on the top of the turnbuckle so you could stand on it, which, again, I always love. That's always brilliant. When I first saw them uh, do that in the, the Angle-McMahon street fight, but instead of a table, it was like a little block of wood. Excellent. Because you never saw it before. It's like, that was brilliant. That was fucking brilliant. Here, it was a swinging neck breaker. You know, it's a casual move. But the way it looked, I was like, yep, this should be the finish. I'm okay with that. It doesn't need to be someone's finisher. It doesn't need to be something crazy. A swinging neck breaker from, the, from standing on top of the table, on top of the turnbuckle. Mia Yim lands perfectly. And I mean perfectly. Dead center on these on these chairs. And the chairs weren't set up as well as they usually are for these spots. Normally they're all facing a certain way so you don't hit any weird uh, the underside because the underside of the tables have little ridges on them. No, they're just a pile. They didn't care. And she hit it perfectly. They could do that three, four, five more times it wouldn't be more perfect than that. That was beautiful. And had to fucking hurt. Just had to. Like There's no way around it. Let's get into some of these highlights. Let's see. WWE, don't flag me. Don't be douches. We're just trying to enjoy the product. Tomorrow yeah. we've seen week after week. Gosh, those vicious kendo shots to the back of Yim. These women have not been able to be contained in the squared circle, and that's how we have come to this moment. How do you guys feel about kendo stick shots, by the way? I remember back in the day, Steve Blackman used to beat the holy da daylights out of everyone. Except then, you could hit him in the head. Ugh. Ugh. I mean, I, I miss some of the headshot stuff. I'm from that era, but... Some of those are like, okay. We, we, it's probably safer to just not do those. <laughs> Mia Yim stopping the kendo stick attack momentarily. Scaring daggers into Candice LeRae. That was a little weak. And that just goes to show you oh, what type of woman Yim is. After taking all those shots. Yim waylaying LeRae, just tattooing her body with these strikes and now just wanting to... Man, is she looking to impale LeRae? Shut up, Moro. Oh, see, here we go. Hit her with the 
Lorraine getting a little bit creative. Hit her with the Mandarin. That she was living in the quote shadow of her sad excuse for a husband. Give with a kick and now a clubbing forearm to Candice Lorraine. Every inch of this venue, a precarious fight. Oh, and Lorray looking to extinguish Mia Yim's momentum. Yim unable to breathe, struggling to get her sight. How do you guys feel about the use of fire extinguishers? They've been doing it for years, but I don't know. It's okay. It's okay. At least they're not winning matches with them. I remember when they first started using them. You get a spray, and here comes like a roll up or a quick finish. Like, ah. Now it's just a nice way to distract the opponent. It's also odd how heels and faces use it, and it's it feels like a dirty heel tactic. But I've seen a lot of baby faces use it too. I don't know. It's one of those weird go both Hostilities ways. Hostilities have been turned up to a spinal tap esque 11 here between Lorray and the Yim. That fire extinguisher to the eyes. Burns makes it so difficult to see, to breathe. Oh no. Oh no, it's right. Candace LeRae. Oh my god. Has Mia Yim. Uh oh. Wanting to launch her with a suplex, perhaps through the table, being fought off valiantly by the head baddie in charge. And Mia Yim just drop kick LeRae through the table. That was sweet. It just was. That was great. Let's see if I can see that one more time. Like, it just, it went perfect. Like, she hit it. It almost went too far, which made it look even better, made it look a little more realistic. Valiantly by the head batty in charge. And Mia Yim just drop kick LeRae through She almost hit the door. Her head almost hit the door. So here we go. There's Defenders. a reason that this is only the second street fight in NXT women's division history. As dangerous as it gets. And this even more so, Beth. Tom Moore, look at that table teetering. And Lorray prying do it. the brass knuckles from Yum's hands. I've always worried about when they do these things, staying on the table spots. If it just broke, we would just all look really stupid. You just go under the table and get a... Or under the ring and get another table and hope that one doesn't break. So, I've always thought, like, do you think they... When they know they're doing this spot, do they grab an actual... Like, this is actually... Not a breakaway table. This one's reinforced. Or do you think this is the exact same tables that they use for the like the, the other table spots that give away? I think that would be stupid. So I'm assuming this one's like an actual solidified table. Just saying. I would hate to see the finale of a good match end with a, one hell of a bad botch like that. And now Candice LeRae in possession be kind of, of funny though. Knuckles, but she is eating the shots from Mia Yim, and that looks anything but stable. The table bridging the top rope, and oh my, LeRae just go. clocked Mia Yim. Oh, a diving, swinging neckbreaker on top of the chairs. LeRae's arm over. Mia Yim, it's over. It is over. That was great. That was great. And I always love when after a big grueling match like that, when all it takes to win is an arm over the other person. It just sells the whole war. They don't do that very often anymore. Like, they really don't. They still have to hook the goddamn leg. It's like, what are we doing? Sometimes someone will go through like three tables, you gotta hook the leg. No. Just lay the arm over, we both got our asses kicked. And it kind of protects the, the loser because it's like the winner kind of lost too. They look like if someone was there to pin Candace, she would have lost. I don't know. I love that finish. They used to do it all the time, especially with like Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle used to win with that constantly. Triple H too. Triple H, Shawn Michaels almost always ended with a one arm, both men out cold finish. It's great. It's It's fantastic. What'd you guys think? Was this better than the Keith Lee Adam Cole match? Was this the best women's street fight match in NXT history? I think it might have been. I think it was. I think it was for both. I think it's a yes for both. I liked Adam Cole and Keith Lee, but I was slightly underwhelmed because of the talent involved. I, I thought it could have been better. Still very good, but I thought it could have been better. Candice LeRae versus Mia Yim in a street fight? I didn't expect. This, this was way better than I thought. 
way better. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down below. Hit like. Hopefully, WWE doesn't flag my channel for that. It's just highlights, guys. It's highlights. Relax. We're trying to enjoy the few times your company's good and interesting. What's wrong with that? Damn it. It's meant to be a compliment. If I'm watching the highlights of one of your matches, it means I really like that goddamn match. I'm not going to do this for every Raw and SmackDown. Anyway. Guys, <laughs> I'll be back. We got more to talk about.